Welcome to the next lesson, The Samples Have Arrived. And here's what we'll be covering in this lesson. What to expect when your samples do arrive, the best way to test them for quality, and what to do if none of them work out. So first off, the samples can take anywhere from a few days to well over a week before they actually show up. You want to be sure to follow up and get a tracking number from your supplier a few days after they've shipped it out and then contact them again if it hasn't arrived within a week. Also, be sure to have a box cutter and some heavy duty scissors handy. I've seen lots of suppliers that wrap their packages in dozens of layers of tape and then a half dozen layers of bubble wrap just to make sure that these products arrive safely to you. Also, the product might arrive with no packaging, a competitor's packaging, packaging in a completely different language, and even with another company's logo on the product itself. This is totally fine. You just need to confirm with your supplier that these will not be a part of your final product. The next step will be to check for quality. Now remember our product tuning exercise we did in the previous module? It's time to pull out the notes from that. You want to test your samples and see how they stack up against all the positive and negative reviews that you made notes on. And speaking of notes, be sure to keep more notes while you're reviewing these samples. I like to use my product opportunity spreadsheet to keep track of all the product, supplier, and sample activities, such as testing out the samples. Here's a product we looked at earlier, the portable LED light box tracer. This customer thought the power port was cheap and flimsy, and another thought it had a dotted layer that made it look pixelated when they were trying to use it. However, don't just look at the negative reviews. You also want to check out what customers did like. This customer felt that the product was great and slim and lightweight. So we'd want to compare ours and see if we felt that ours was the same as that. Here's some tips to keep in mind when checking out your samples for quality. Be sure to ask your supplier for instructions on how to use the products and specifications if necessary. There have been times in the past where we thought a sample wasn't very good, only to realize we simply didn't know how to use it the right way. And don't be gentle. I like to pretend that the child of a customer or one of my own have gotten a hold of the product and started doing all kinds of things with it, even things they weren't intended to do, just to see exactly how much this product sample could take. Also, ask friends and family for their honest opinions to tell you what they do, what they don't like about it, and if they'd be willing to buy that product. If you have samples that are identical, and it will happen, be sure to put a sticker on them to remember which supplier each product came from. And if a product uses batteries, be sure to test out exactly how long each will last on a fresh set of batteries. And while you're checking out the samples, be sure to use the product opportunity spreadsheet to keep track of the notes on each of the different samples you're receiving from each supplier. That'll make it a lot easier when we're going back and trying to determine the final supplier that we're going with. So what do you do if none of the samples work out for you? Well, if you order three samples from three different suppliers, it's highly unlikely this will be the case. You should be okay. However, it can happen. And if that happens, there's two different scenarios. First, if the product generally has good reviews on Amazon, then it's most likely our suppliers that are the fault. And what we need to do is simply get samples from other suppliers that we had researched earlier. However, sometimes products just seem to struggle and they never meet up with customer expectations. So if the product itself on Amazon has lots of negative reviews and maybe can't get above a three and a half or four star rating, then that product might not be the right one to go for. If that's the case, I would move on to the next of your best top three product opportunities and then order samples for them and repeat the process. So now it's time for you to take action. I want you to evaluate your samples and be sure to take lots of notes. And then in the next lesson, we're going to learn all about choosing the right supplier and also getting the best pricing. So we'll see you in the next lesson after you've reviewed your samples.